Who is this idiot? It's in my mouth. A blue monster comes, wreaking havoc in its spa. Saitama, a bald man with a cape, resolves to handle the problem. He saves a young girl from the monster known as Vaccine Man, who claims to have a better backstory than simply being a hero for pleasure. Still, he defeats him with a single punch before he can continue, shouting in frustration. A less bald and unemployed Saitama runs into a half-crab man dubbed Crablanty. Still, he leaves him alone because a little boy with an excellent cleft chin drew nipples on his carapace and evidently wants to pay for them. He chooses to save the child by killing Crab Landy with a necktie and tearing out his eye stock after all of his training. He lost his hair. That happened three years ago. In the present, Saitama recalls a huge man interfering with his shopping expedition. A crazed doctor apparently invented a serum to make this meathead brother the strongest man alive. While the brains maniacally proclaim how they'll dominate the world, Saitama emerges on the left shoulder and instructs his brother to kill the man on his shoulder. No, it dawns on the bronze, and he tries to remove Saitama from his sight sending him deep underground as the strongest man alive. Makes you feel hollow. Saitama concurs. It's dull to have too much power, unintentionally leveling B-City with one right hook and sending the monster flying. As Saitama observes, there is less need for emotions. There's a subterranean invasion when you can solve everything with a single punch. 70 people have been killed by the Earth Dwellers. Saitama is overjoyed. Finally, some adversaries can rekindle his battling spirit. They even have a king, which he discovers when he awakens. There is an invasion, but nothing like the one described. He imagined a vast swarm of mosquitoes and Sidizi at the same time. Saitama is unable to catch even one while watering his cactus. When the blood from a looter in the abandoned city is totally drained, a cyborg realizes they are being controlled by a mosquito woman who exchanges her legs. Sayama races along the street, spraying a solitary mosquito to collide with the cyborg and the massive swarm around the woman. Even though she sets the bugs on fire, the tremendous amount of blood she consumes drives the cyborg to self-reflect. When Saitama swats her away, disappearing quicker than his garments. In all of his strength, the cyborg aspires to become his student, and he is not joking. He appears a week later, identifying himself as Janos, insisting on addressing Saitama's master and telling his entire life story unprompted. Essentially, a cyborg destroys his hometown and its inhabitants causing Genos to become a cyborg to get revenge. As stated, a cyborg, a mysterious entity, tries to capture Saitama for his genetic experiments, sending genetically engineered beasts after him and genes discovered from an armored gorilla who's a tale about the House of Evolution, a cloning lab managed by clones, is also shown. He embarks on a speech about Dr. Genus, who studies artificial evolution and is intrigued by Saitama's extraordinary strength. When one of the clones arrives at the home of evolution, Geno's levels, the entire above-ground complex, one of the clones unleashes havoc, Kabuto the peak of evolution. According to the doctor, when he goes to assault Saitama, he deals with Janos easily. He backs off, afraid of his might, and his lack of defense leaves him wide open before they fight revealing the secret to his strength. Every day for three years, or at least until your hair falls out, do 100 push-ups, 100 sit-ups, 100 squats, and a 10-kilometer run. That can't be his secret. That's simply regular strength training. Unfortunately, that is pretty much the gist for everyone in the room. Kabuto enters carnage mode. He'll be in this rampaging state for a week. Saitama appears vanquished until next Saturday. He hasn't even fought in a week, which means today is Saturday. He made a critical error. He missed a discount day at the supermarket, completely wrecking his wallet and carnage Kabuto. However, Janus assures him there is still time to make it before the store closes. They rip a hole in the wall and hurry to the store. Dr. Janus abandons his research immediately while the hero organization investigates Geno's destructive talents. After delivering an impassioned speech about eating the banks or trickle-down bootstraps, a terrorist dubbed Hammerhead destroys a building owned by Senior, a wealthy and powerful man with an incorrect building. But the thought that counts Saitama, who jolts awake after a scary dream involving rock, paper, scissors, and discovering a gang of terrorists on the loose. He's not going to put up with it. They've now stolen his appearance. Every man with a beard is a public enemy. Zenito doesn't have to look far for assistance. He hires an assassin, who arrives at a nearly too convenient time to deal with Hammerhead and company. He quickly rids the cue balls of their heads. Still, Hammerhead escapes only to run into Saitama in the forest, who smashes his stolen battle armor. When the assassin arrives, 
he assumes he is a terrorist. Saddened by the fact that Saitama has no idea who he is, the hired gun zips around, introducing himself as Speed, a sound sonic. Saying his own name is the only thing that slows him down. He's startled that Saitama can block his attacks. When he accidentally sacks him, Sonic promises that they'll meet again. As Saitama slinks away, he informs Genos that they have a problem. Despite slaying more monsters than any other hero, no one knows who he is. He'll have to sign up for the official hero registry if he wants to be recognized. They agreed to sign up as a group so that Genos might become his formal follower. There are just two obstacles in their path. During a physical and written exam, Saitama destroys every documentation of the physical phase and most of the equipment. Janos receives excellent scores on both pots, but why would they subject a cyborg to the physical? He is quickly ranked as an S-class hero. He begins celebrating, only to discover that he misread the top half of the letter C as Saitama passed by one point. Despite having a perfect physical score, they are the only two who pass the hero examinations and must sit through a class taught by Snack and a class hero who is upset by their lack of attention span. Later, Snack attempts to haze Snack, only to embarrass himself further. Genos invites Snack to a spar, but when he asks his master to go all out, he is absolutely bewildered by his extraordinary strength. He still doesn't believe that Saitama's entire training schedule is the key to his superiority. After that, they obtain Samudin when a class, a rank, one hero, and a sweet mask come outdoors to chat with Janos. He greets him with a foreboding welcome to the big leagues. It's been five days since they became heroes, and the Genos arrived. He casually explains that Class C heroes must meet a quota or be removed from the registry. Saitama had no idea, and he had no notion of what he could teach his apprentice. He swiftly prepares something. He read a manga about exercising his intellect or something. He assigned him the aim of finishing in the top 10 of his class. He sprints around the city for two days just to aggravate the situation. Sonic arrives looking for a rematch with his fictitious opponent, but is startled when Saitama breaks his sword and threatens him in rage. As another C-class hero tank Top Tiger arrives, a woman points them out, and Saitama laughs. Sonic is a criminal but becomes much more irritated when he discovers that no one acknowledges him as a hero. Sonic attacks the tank top tiger with an exploding shuriken and begins inflicting mayhem. Saitama is too busy for this. He must locate a villain. That's it for this part. So let's wait for the next one to see how things go. In the meantime, subscribe to the channel and don't miss out on the other entertaining anime videos. Peace out.